This is probably gonna be the hardest video that I have ever made to date. I'm running on no sleep. Like, my brain has just been going and going and going, questioning what happened, what if. So forgive me for being a mess, and if you watched my last video, my Nick Box video, I was a mess then too. I had to wait a few days to make this video because it's really, really tough for me. It's still really fresh in my mind. <sighs> The way life has been for the last couple of months, I just give up. I feel like nothing good is gonna happen. And if there is anything good, it's not gonna take away from the bad at all. We're gonna be talking about my cat, Daisy, my fat, spicy meatball. Growing up, I was always a dog lover, but when I was in sixth grade, 11 or 12, I got a cat named Haley. I had her for about 10 years and she was my best friend and I instantly became a cat lover. She got old, she had kidney failure and she ended up passing away. We had to put her down because she was so sick. I said I was never gonna get another cat again. But then in 2012, Chris and I got our first apartment together. We were there for about a month and he said that I could get a cat. So I contacted a lady online and I was actually gonna get gray striped tiger cat. I wanted one that kind of looked like Haley, but when I got to the house, that's when I saw Daisy. I held all these tiger cats and they just wouldn't let me hold them. I didn't feel a connection with them because when I picked out Haley from the SPCA, I felt a connection with her instantly. And I didn't feel that with the other cats. And then I look over and I see Daisy and she's just giving me this look like, pick me up, pick me. So I did and she chilled on my chest and I felt a connection, so I took her home. I brought her home and we ended up taking a nap on the bed together and we just had a bond. And that might be weird to some people who aren't like big animal lovers or whatever, saying, you know, some an adult has a bond with a cat, but it, it's true, I had a very strong bond with her. Had her for seven years, uh, February, she'd be eight. She was fine, I only took her to the vet twice in the last seven, almost eight years. First time was to get her fixed. Second time was a couple years ago because she had a UTI. Other than that, fine. She was fat, that's why I call her my fat spicy meatball. She had such a big personality. One minute she'd be loving on you and the next minute she just wanted to push your buttons. Her and Chris had a love-hate relationship. There's some stuff that happened that I don't want to talk about because I'm still trying to process that after all of this this last week and I don't want to hold any grudges with my husband. But over the last couple of years they, you know, grew a connection as well but you could tell that Daisy had this animosity towards him because anytime he would hug me or kiss me, she would wake up from a dead sleep and run to wherever we were just to meow and yell at him, like, get your hands off of my mama. <laughs> Her and Zoe had the same kind of relationship. They would get into little fights where Daisy would push Zoe's buttons. Fights as in Zoe would bark at her. Daisy's tail would get big. There was only one time where Zoe pinned her onto the couch, but she didn't bite her or hurt her or anything, just scared her. You know, they would get into like little things like that, but then the very next second, they'd be cuddling and it was so cute. But then I noticed like, I'd say over the last couple of weeks, I'd be like, Chris, have you noticed anything weird with Daisy? She just would lay in the same spot all day long. And usually, you know, she would do that for a few hours and then get up, play with Zoe, play with me, cuddle with me, whatever. But there was a couple of times over the last, I'd say, couple of weeks where she just laid there. But then the very next day, she'd be fine. Over the weekend, I took a video of her slamming. She, oh my gosh, she would slam the cupboard door trying to get her treats. Everything was fine. I never would imagine having to make this video today. I really wouldn't, I really, <laughs> maybe another eight years from now, but not now. On Monday, she was good, she was fine. Everything was good. She cuddled me first thing in the morning. She always met me at the door if I went, you know, had to go anywhere. When I woke up, she'd be right there. She snuggled with me after I took Chris to work and everything was normal. She even messed with Zoe a little bit on Monday. Like, everything was fine. And then Tuesday morning, I woke up and her and Zoe were just laying on the couch separate. Daisy was laying over here and Zoe was over here. I was in our downstairs bathroom and I looked over at Daisy and it looked like she was peeing on the couch. And I was like, what is she doing? So I just watched her, but it, she wasn't. It was just how the blanket was bunched up. But she, I thought she was sitting weird. 
something just told me something wasn't right. And then I watched her and she like slowly like wobbled down like she had no energy in her. I was like, Daisy. And normally anytime I say her name, she would look up, bright eyed, bushy tailed. Sometimes we'd get up or, or especially if I go to pet her, you know, she would get up and start purring and cuddle me. That day she didn't. She just laid there and she looked so miserable. I apologize if I get choked up. This is really, really, really hard. She just looks so miserable. And I'm like, what is the matter? What's wrong? I so wish animals could talk, man. Like, oh my, I, but I just, I knew something was wrong. I'm like, this is not my Daisy. I've never seen her like this before. There's something wrong. Text Chris and I said, there, I think there's something wrong with Daisy. And he's like, yeah, she threw up everywhere sometime last night. I had to clean it up this morning. And I was like, oh, that's weird. She's thrown up before. You know, if she ate too fast or had too many treats, you know, she would throw up. So it wasn't too out of the ordinary. And she kept throwing up. And I text Chris and I'm like, I need to take her to the vet. But unfortunately, because of everything that's been going on the last few months with my mental health, I'm not working right now. I quit my job at Country Fair because I needed to take care of myself. We were flat broke. If I take her to the vet, they'll look at her, but then they won't give me any of the, me any of the medicine. There was a few people on Facebook that made me feel like shit for not being able to take her to the vet. And I'm like, vet's not gonna do anything if I have no money. Like what, what am I to do? Luckily, I have a friend, Kristen. Thank you, Kristen, still. I really appreciate you. She said, I will give you this money for Daisy's vet visit tomorrow because I had planned on taking her on Wednesday. Wake up, take Chris to work, call the vet, and take her right there because I assumed everything would be okay. Six hours straight, she kept throwing up and it was watery, foamy, and then foamy yellow bile. And I was like, there's something really wrong with her. I tried so hard to find someone that would be like, bill me. No one would. You don't have money? Well, I'm sorry. I have it tomorrow. I'll have it tomorrow and nothing. They say just get her to drink, get her to lick some ice or eat some ice chips, anything. And I said, she won't. I've been trying it all day. She won't do it. Daisy's the type, she doesn't like to be picked up. She is, she's a feisty little thing, you know? But I could pick her up. I laid next to her on the floor and I was talking to her. And at one point she did start purring and I felt hopeful, you know, like, oh good. Yeah, okay, all right. Maybe she's feeling better. She hasn't puked in like an hour or two, so maybe she's feeling better. She still wasn't eating or drinking. I noticed she would go to her bowl, her water dish, and she would hang her head down and look like she was about to drink, but then she wouldn't and she just lay down next to it. I thought that was weird. I even took a video of it. I didn't, I didn't think, I don't know. I just thought it maybe it hurt her belly or something. And I kept telling everyone, I think there's something really wrong with her. Everyone's like, you're just overreacting, you're worrying. And I said, no, I just have something in my gut. There's something wrong with her and I don't know what to do. And it really hit when I heard her in her litter box and I was like, oh good, she's going to the bathroom. Good, okay, good. Nope, she made a spot for herself to lay there. At that point, I just had this horrible feeling in my stomach, like she's not gonna, she's not gonna make it. I don't know why, I just had that horrible feeling. And I was like, Daisy, please don't. What are you doing? Please get out of there, please be okay. And she looked up at me and then just laid back down and I was like, what the f So I looked it up online, characteristics of a dying cat. She had all of them except for hiding because she wasn't hiding anywhere like my cat Haley did when she was dying. And then she wasn't having seizures, everything else. And I didn't know that the, I didn't know hang, hanging her head over the water bowl and laying next to the water bowl is a sign of dying. I had no idea and she was doing it all day. She got out of the litter box and I was like, oh, thank God. And then she did it again with the hanging over, you know, her head over the water dish and, and then laid down next to it and I said, Chris, I think she's dying. And he said, no, she's not. And I said, she is. Because the way she was breathing, <laughs> I've never seen an animal die, I'm sorry. The way she was breathing was really, really bad and not normal. <laughs> and she had her mouth open and she had black foam coming out of her, like black, yeah, like a black foam coming out of her mouth. And I looked at her and I said, Daisy. She looked right in my eyes and I said, I love you. And she stared right in my eyes the whole time until I said, please don't do this to me. And then she looked down. I can't, this is so f
hard. I remember I texted a few people and I said, I think Daisy's dying. I don't think she's going to make it overnight. And everyone said I was overreacting and I just, I knew. I texted my friend and I said, I wish there was an, an overnight care or something. And I go upstairs and I'm like, I'm going to take a bath to try to relax. I posted this status on Facebook and not even five minutes. And five minutes later, I'm in the bathroom and I hear Chris flying up the stairs and um, he's breathing really heavy. And when he's like really stressed out and anxious, he breathes really heavy. He's like, babe, I think Daisy's dying right now. And I just start crying and I said, why? And what's going on? And he said, she let out a like a whine, like a meow, a really raspy meow and then she started convulsing I went downstairs and she was gone I heard Chris go Daisy no Daisy as soon as I looked at her I knew she was gone and then she, you know she pooped and freaked out I was screaming at Chris like it was his fault it was like what the f happened what happened to her she was fine yesterday He's like, babe, I don't know. I'm so sorry. And I just started hitting everything I could. I just started punching the stairs and I started like ripping my hair out. And I punched the wall as hard as I could. And that's why my hands all up. It's all black and blue. I don't know. I don't think I broke it, but it's all sorts of messed up. I called my mom and I was like, I told you she died and my mom came over and thank god for her because chris and i couldn't we couldn't pick her up there's no way there's no way i could have wrapped her it was hard enough to look at her after she was gone zoe you could tell there's something wrong with her as well because i mean depressed she was depressed she knew that her sister slash best friend was gone because when my mom came over zoe flew to her but then Normally, she'd be right up her butt, but she flew back right into the couch and just laid down, and you could just tell in her eyes that she was really sad. Thank God my mom wrapped her up. We ended up burying her in the backyard. I wrapped her in my Minnie Mouse blanket that she liked to lay in. She would lay on it in the foot of my bed. I wrapped her in that because it was my one of my favorite blankets and hers. I had her original blanket that I got her when she was a kitten that she would lay on. I wanted to keep that for myself. Buried her favorite mouse toy that she always played with, the only toy she ever played with. I buried her mouse toy with her and I carried her to the grave. I've never seen an animal die like that. One minute, I don't know, I just don't, I don't understand what was wrong with her. I keep racking my brain. What happened? What was so wrong that killed her so fast? Within eight hours, she was gone. Eight hours later, she was gone. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if she had cancer or what. I called the vet though and I said, what would kill a cat so fast? And they said, there's numerous things. But they said the way that she sounded, even if I brought her to the vet that day, they would have told me to put her down. And which I guess that takes some of the guilt off, but I'm like, I don't know. It's just so... I hate this house now. Because I don't have... I mean, usually sitting here, she's right up here trying to get in the camera. And I don't know. It's just so hard. And I don't know. I just don't think I could ever have a cat again. Because this was way too much for me. If she was old and had all these health problems and I had to make that decision to end her suffering, I mean, it would still be f devastating as hell, but this, she was at least seven. She was going to be eight in February. Like, what was, what killed her so fast? What was so wrong? I don't get it. Just, just a day or two before she died, she was ripping around through the house and I don't know. I just don't. I don't get it. If you know anything about cats, please, what what could have killed her that fast? She wasn't poisoned. Someone said maybe she was poisoned, but Chris didn't clean anything the night before. Like, he vacuumed, but he didn't clean with any cleaning products that she would have licked up. And I don't know. I just, I'm so confused and I don't, I don't know.
it just really sucks and or not yesterday the day before the day after it happened i knew that was going to be the hardest today because when i wake up normally she's right there to greet me and she wasn't and i sat on the couch and i just started bawling and zoe was sitting next to me and i said i miss daisy and i looked over at her and it looked like her eyes were watery and then she had her bottom lip out like she was pouting and she started looking around and Chris, he was so upset that night he cried and it's like I hate this house so much I want to move so bad now but yet she's in my backyard so I don't want to part with her it's just I can't take much more I lost my grandpa a little over a month ago and now Daisy and I'm like in the midst of after having a mental breakdown like I just <laughs> I don't know how much more I can take. And I know it's probably, to some people, it's probably ridiculous that I'm this upset, but I'm such an animal lover and I mean, I don't have kids, so those are my kids. And because I don't have kids, it's like, that upsets me. And then, I don't know. I don't know how to even explain it. It's like, I'm so depressed that I don't have my own kids. And now Daisy will never be around my kids whenever I have any. And but my animals are my kids right now and even if I had kids they'd still be my kids and a member you know member of the family and I don't give a shit if you think it's ridiculous that I'm this upset mentally emotionally broken I never witnessed that before and I think the worst part about it is not knowing what the f is wrong with her like I said I only took her to the vet twice and it was just one time that she was sick and it, she had a UTI and that's it she wasn't I don't, I don't get it. She was very obese, she was obese, but you would think if that's what was wrong that she wouldn't be running around. She wouldn't, she was very active. Like you wouldn't even, and she was a fat cat, but you would never know it because of how active she was, you know? She didn't act like an obese cat at all. I'm so confused and I'm so sad and I don't know. <sighs> was going to have this video, this the starter, and then do my little tribute for her right at, on the same video, but it's going to be too long. So my next video that I'm going to be posting is going to be a tribute video to my Daisy, my Daisy days, my fat spicy meatball. I found a ton of videos from over the years, including the one that I just recorded on what Friday or Saturday night just a couple days before she died so I'm sure that's gonna be long but I don't care I want to put it all together and show everyone how much of a personality my cat had like my first cat Haley had such a big personality and so did Daisy I don't know I'm just so sad and Zoe's sad Chris is sad and Chris and I are so confused and I don't know so yeah she was bipolar just like me <laughs> And I try to just think of, you know, the good times and laugh, but I think it's, it's still just too fresh. It's only been three days, you know? I can't get that out of my head, and I can't stop questioning what happened. Did she have a tumor in her stomach? Is that why she gained so much weight? She had a huge pouch. Did she have a heart condition we didn't know about? Because when I took her to the vet for her UTI, they said that's the only thing that's wrong. She is perfectly healthy. I'm just so confused and I'm so sad and I'm sorry that I pulled like a baby in this, but I just, I can't. It's just, it's just too much right now. But I don't think I could ever get another cat, especially not right now. I can't even, I can't, I can't even think about that right now. My next video will be my little tribute video to my meatball and yeah so love you daisy if you can hear me <laughs> i'm so mad at you though because you left me you were like my best friend but hopefully i just try to think that daisy and my cat Haley met and they're playing and my grandpa and my grandma are watching or you know taking care of them for me grandpa if daisy bites you i apologize <laughs> It just sucks so bad. I love you, Daisy, and I miss you. And I'm sorry that I didn't know you were hurting. I'm sorry there's nothing I could do, but just know that I loved you. And it's not the same without you. This house sucks. It's too quiet. I would do anything to have her just meow as loud as she can to 
beg for treats or knock over my stand that I'm filming on or bite me even. <laughs> I don't even care. Like, mess with Zoe. I don't, I would do anything for all that. I'm gonna go do a favor for me and hug your pets extra tight for me today and kiss them and tell them you love them. You just never know. They could be fine one day and the next day they're gone. All right, I can't, I gotta stop talking about this.